Hello everyone. Hello Anita. Hi there. Before we start, let's clean the energy a little bit around us. <laughs> so we can channel and we can receive the message. So the message will go to you, for you, because today we're going to talk about Caressa. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the quantum sex. Mm -hmm. about the sexual energy and how powerful is it, how to work with it, and what is it. So please, Evita, guide us through. All right, tell us the story, tell us the message, give us a message. Mm -hmm. So it's quite obvious today that we have been lied about sexual energy, right? Uh, pretty much everyone will agree. On one hand, we've been taught to repress this energy by religion. Religion told us, taught us that the body is evil, that we should be ashamed of this energy, not express it, and in general it was a repress a lot of repression, right? Was put on the lower chakras. On the other hand, another extreme, and we kind of accepted it by popular consensus, was what was taught to us by liberal media. Yeah, so liberal media kind of encourages expression of sexual energy the more the better you know the more partners the more orgasms the more freaking vibrators <laughs> you know it's just go for it yes you can't overdose this uh, overdose this this is like a blessing it like orgasm is a salvation it's almost made into a salvation for humanity all right so you can see that the mechanism is pretty clear on one hand one one wing of matrix is has repressed that energy and the other one has encouraged a certain expression i would say a reckless expression right and why is it reckless because we are dealing with the most powerful force in nature so it's like playing a little bit playing with fire basically it's a little humanity right now it's like a like it's like a kid that's playing with a grenade you know <laughs> And everyone is watching, like, when is the grenade going to pop off, right? So uh, th this energy, sexual energy, is the most potent force in nature. When it is unleashed, it is literally unstoppable because it is so sweet. It's, dri it's driven by pleasure. And the purpose of it is spreading genes, spreading DNA, spreading information far and wide, replicating species, multiplying, and so on. So literally every single thing, every blade of grass, every bee, every bunny uh, seeks to copy, copy itself, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So what is Caressa? Yeah, so what basically... Is Where does it come from and it's connected with a different yeah. um, culture? Like, mm -hmm. what is it? Yeah, so Caressa is just one of the names that people call a, a phenomena. I call it quantum sex because it's quantum sacred energy exchange. Quantum because it is discrete, it's not visible. Mm. So when you look at people who make love, the quantum, in, in, in terms of quantum connection, there's not much action. It's literally, you know, you, if, you, if you enter the bedroom of people who practice karetsa, white tantra, sexual energy cultivation, um, or quantum sex, you would think there's, there's nothing, it's boring. And yet, Yet they connect in such a way where there is where they harness that energy and are present. They bring awareness to the to the pleasure they are experiencing in their body, the connection, and in the same time it's a meditative experience. So it's almost in stillness. So from outside it looks boring. And how is it that it's not boring? Well, the key is preparation to this experience prep the key is what happens before the man and the woman enter the bedroom okay what happens is that they they both prepare so the preparation for quantum sexual uh, uh, quantum sex sacred energy exchange is uh, ha happens through fasting okay fasting means not only that you're not eating but that you actually take your senses inwards and you remind yourself who you truly are. So in spending, instead of you know, browsing through online women on the internet or some chicks on, the, on, the, on Instagram, you actually go within 
and you take all those senses and you ask who is animating my body who is it who am i i know i am not my body i am not i'm not my thoughts because i can observe my thoughts yeah so i'm not my mind so who is that is operating this vessel this avatar this technology so in that sense it is a very deep awareness and deep consciousness i would say you when you realize you are a source player in the in the game of life the, the greatest game there is then that the consciousness of the consciousness that's needed to experience caressa or quantum sex quantum intimacy that, that begins so when you look inward when you realize i am a soul i am a spiritual i'm an i'm an energy being i'm a field of energy so then once you once you remember that you seek a partner that also honors that within themselves right and so um fasting because both partners pre prepare themselves through with with conscious energy cultivation so I mentioned fasting because um, a couple who practices quantum intimacy, quantum sex, they will usually channel. They will. They first of all, they need to know themselves. So they kind of starve the eyes, starve the senses. Right? There is usually a period of being alone, solo, knowing yourself, knowing how the body functions knowing how your brain um, operates, how your hormones, your chakras operate when you orgasm and when you cultivate sexual energy. So it's a path that a man embarks on when he channels sexual energy and we, we know it as semen retention. And now men all over the world are discovering, hey, hey, we've been duped by uh, pornography. Uh, it's basically we've been uh, our mind our mental capacities have been stolen right the real estate of the mind of man has been invaded by boobs and asses streaming from the internet when you really think about it it's like a social like an experiment that has happened that has been unleashed by artificial intelligence because most of the content that you see online i guarantee you it's cgi all right you can ask yourself, for example, why is it free? Well, it is free because it weakens men, right? You know, it also confuses women, right? Because we, you know, people will look at this and they think, ah, this is how you make love. Okay, so now we need to do the same thing when we enter bedroom. And then literally the imagination is so um, limited within the framework or, or, or what we have witnessed in, in porn. And let's face it, this is the only education about sex that people have nowadays. I mean, children are, are exposed to this as early as 10, 11, 10 years old. That's, that's, the, that's the only conversation they have about, you know, about intimacy, right? So um, men are waking up through the NoFap movement, through semen retention movement, through the awareness that, hey, you know what, I don't want to get drained. Okay, I don't want to be with some energy vampire that's just going to, you know, seduce me, right, by, you know, some uh, sexy lingerie and, and fool me into releasing my vital force, the force of life, yes? So men are realizing, you know, there is just tons of minerals in semen, there is hormones, yeah, monatomic gold, phosphorus, phosphorus decides about the brain performance of the man. Right? So if he loses semen, if he loses uh, the seed, what happens is that, that he's not able to, to put a sentence together later mm -hmm. when he wants to approach a woman. His confidence is gone. Hyperactive. Yes. Mm -hmm. He becomes uh, paranoid, weak, shy, mm -hmm. frustrated, mm -hmm. and so on. That's where we have so much. So, so, and ultimately, what happens is that when man ejaculates, he lowers his testosterone. Right? So he becomes... Uh, weak, shy, um, um, you know, testosterone decides about muscle performance, brain performance, and courage in a man. Generosity. When a man has testosterone, he feels he has surplus of energy. He's the king of the world. He's able to do anything, move mountains. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Yeah, especially when he loves the woman, or especially when the woman shows up in his life, boom, the motivation kicks in. Yeah, we've been told that uh, women need to be empowered. Well, I, I say it's BS. Okay, it's the biggest lie that we women bought into. A woman does not need to be empowered. A woman is power. She just needs to know that. And she needs to gift th that her presence very selectively only to a man she respects. And when she respects a man, and the man feels loved. And the man, on the other hand, when he loves the woman, that's when she feels great. So a man should love the woman so much that be ready to give his own life for her. Yes, that's that's how men truly love women. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, so men have become awakened in that sense, knowing themselves, knowing their body that if they channel their sexual energy and don't release it, they actually become powerful. They become unmessable with. They become respectable. Yes, and not only among women, the, the pheromones get released and women gravitate towards men like this because women feel this man has, he is loaded, he has seat. Yes, so there's something, you know, some, uh, in Vedas they call it vriya, yeah, or virya, I, I think virya, yes, that's that force, virility in a man. Yeah, so, um, I mean, I can, it's, it's too, and I feel this energy very strongly. I can enter a nightclub, for example, and I can see, oh, most of the guys are just empty tanks. They're just empty, sorry, gentlemen, drained. Mm -hmm. And maybe three guys are there and all the women swarm around them. Yeah, so these men have choice. Man chooses the woman, yeah? And it's nice when he can have a big choice, right? Then she feels special, he has chosen me. Mm -hmm. So there is a big, there is a need right now for women to wake up. Okay, men have been on the path for years already, on the path of path, path of no fab, on the path of personal development, yes, divine masculinity. Women, on the other hand, in order to prepare for conscious intimacy, yes, quantum, uh, quantum sex, caressa sex, women need to know themselves and um, harness their sexual energy as well. Yes, so that means, uh, ladies. I, I highly encourage, I encourage you to question everything you've been told about orgasm through mainstream media. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you start to say about this fasting and preparation yes. for that. So let's imagine uh, a couple yes. or even a single person. So yes. uh, what does it mean to be in the fasting? So you are not having any sexual pleasure for some time or what mm -hmm. does it mean? Yes, so basically you see, uh, we've been told, right, that orgasm is like the salvation of humanity, especially a female orgasm. Oh, yeah, it's just like, go for it, more, 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 right? So, uh, practically speaking, as a woman, um, I channel my sexual energy. It means that if I feel aroused, I take this energy, I feel, I breathe, or I'm just present with it, and I take this energy up, the, up my spine, it flows like light. It's like a beam of light that goes up my spine. Yes, and that is that can this can be experienced if you actually abstain from sex for a while. Okay, so um, it doesn't mean all your life you're going to choose that path. You can. Okay, it's it's highly you know it's amazing when you actually discover that you don't have to be in a relationship. You do not have to do the same things as other people do. You can actually choose the path of powerful, you know, conscious celibacy. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. dedicate yourself as a, you know, leader for humanity, for example. You bring this force of, of desire and you transmute it into the force of love. And that love becomes available for all humanity, for all beings. It's a frequency that beams. Yeah. Um, and individually, now imagine this truth comes out from neuroscience so we cannot this, this, here's the irony we cannot count on truth being spoken to us from television 
okay, from Hollywood, from, from MTV and all of this, or, or from porn. We cannot count that, you know, clergy is going to inform us about sex. Officially, they know nothing about it, right? Just told us not to do it. Yeah. It's all crazy. So where is the truth coming from, right? First of all, ancient spiritual teachings. They've been talking about this for, if you examine all say, sacred scriptures, yeah? Veda for, Vedas, for example, they would call about Brahman Chaya, yeah? Where they would encourage sex, channeling sexual energy, cultivating it, not releasing, not going for the finish, yeah? And um, it's, they basically say it's like being in the situation of foreplay where, where, where God is making love to you, like luring you, adoring you. You feel that energy that the universe adores you when you channel sexual energy. It brings you people, money, you know, like everything you need. It just, you magnetize it, yeah? And neuroscience confirms this, okay? So neuroscience is right now confirming sci science and quantum physics. And neuroscience is confirming what we have learned from mystical ancient teachings, ancient scriptures, yeah? Mystical path, not state religion, which is government, basically, yeah? So neuroscience is confirming now that, for example, it takes at least two weeks mm. for a human body to reset its hormones, its nervous system, all the, you know, all the cocktail of hormones back to the same level of optimum performance, like inner peace, confidence, inspiration, charisma, and also just magical, like this beautiful fascination with the partner, mm. right? So when you, thought, when you meet someone first time, you have that optimum, you know, magical connection. You feel like you're falling in love. And then what happens? People get, in, people get into sexual activity. They lose, they lose energy through orgasm, female or male. What happens is that they also get satiated. Mm -hmm. Yes? They don't reset this energy. They don't take a break to reset this energy. So it just go, go, go. It becomes highly what? Addictive. Mm -hmm. Neuroscientists actually say that, uh, that, they, that there is a neuroscientist that actually scans the brain of a man during ejaculation and the brain of a man shooting heroin and it just came out identical. Wow. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So basically our, our man has been given digital heroin, mm -hmm. our boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is our family. These are brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with women, I wouldn't be surprised if they would scan the the brain of a woman, you know, when she's aroused and when she's uh, orgasmic. We might discover she she either is shooting heroin or maybe cocaine, mm. something in that sense. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it takes at least two weeks, I would say three, to reset the cocktail the cocktail of hormone, dopamine, oxytocin. Uh, all endorphins, the vasopressin, prolactin, okay? There is a cocktail of hormones that are being released by what? Chakras. When you really think about it, what orgasm is doing is that it blows up all the chakras, yeah? So it's a little bit like, you know, when you have a lot of electrical devices in the house uh, switched on at once, right? You have the the fridge, the washing machine, the microwave, the oven, the vacuum cleaner, hair dryer, everything. What's gonna, and all the lights, what's gonna happen? It's gonna break the fuse. And how many of those broken fuse events can the electrical system of the house handle and stay, stay, stay solid? Okay, so this yeah. is the first step. First step is to Stay in yes. A, Get to know thyself first of all. So three no. weeks so celibacy. Minimum. Minimum yes. three weeks of celibacy. So basically, you channel your sexual energy. You get to see the benefit of what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And then, when you are ready, mm -hmm. okay, ta -da -da, you mm -hmm. enter the bedroom, right? And you enter the bedroom. Stop. Yes. Mm -hmm. ah. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. When Caretza partners enter bedroom, they have total trust to each other. They are committed, but they're not committed just to each other. They don't control each other in that commitment, in that like like people do in, in marriages, right? They 
they are committed to each of them are committed to channel their own sexual energy and they experience the benefits they have they feel the holy spirit fire coursing through their body through their aura through their chakra system so it is a no-brainer that there will be a high level of trust between the, the, those two people right and also they enter the bedroom with the consciousness knowing that they are source players they are souls and they are not just the bodies yeah so when you when you make love caretza way you you look through you don't just stay on the flesh you look through and and ultimately it becomes like a very very spiritual experience mm. yeah and you see all of this is possible when both men and women have something called self-discipline yeah and before i go any further i would like to just share something that as a woman on my path of knowing myself i realized what happens what happens to me as a woman what happens to women when we actually are addicted to orgasm Okay, so I'll share it with my own, from my own experience. You go ahead and observe as you channel your energy, observe if that makes sense. So first of all, women, when women release their energy, we are being told it is, there is no side effect. Yeah, man should channel his energy. Man should have self-control and last forever. But woman, the more, the more, pleasure she has the more orgasm she has the better and so on except you know what that is not the case because it causes it, it causes nervous um, uh, instability the whole neurology neuroendocrinology of the woman so her nervous system her hormonal system is going haywire mm. okay so her chakra system is going haywire her her field her quantum field her aura is just not stable yeah and this is why we have so so much drama in our relationships right now yes because women are lacking self-discipline and self-knowing basically we've been lied to fail in our relationships we've been set up to fail by miseducation misinformation and so on that's why those of us who love truth we're digging deep, deeper and lifting no stones unturned yes to really you know, verify uh, everything and, and examine our beliefs. So what's, sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. uh, what's the typical behave of uh, this balanced woman and when this uh, feeling appear? Yeah. Because at the beginning you feel great, but a few yeah, days later totally. is the exactly. side effect, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you see when man ejaculates, he's, he's, he experienced something what the French people call little death. Orgasm is in French, le petite mort. Yes. And we can see, you know, a lot of times he would just fall asleep he needs to withdraw from the woman he needs to distance himself because he, he needs to recuperate reset his brain chemicals yes he needs to basically he's got a brain fog like you know like hangover mm -hmm. yes and lack of confidence and he feels very very vulnerable and weak so he does not want to appear this way in front of his woman mm -hmm. yeah also in nature when men ejaculated he he would in in you know in nature in terms of survival of the species because this is the moment when he becomes weak there's a danger that some saber-toothed tiger or a wolf would just you know a pack of wolves would just attack him right so this is the time when men naturally needs to withdraw alienate and so on right and a lot of times we women after orgasmic sex we feel like you know, we feel terrific, first of all, yeah, we feel energized because he brings the energy and gives it to us, yes? Men are providers, they are providing this, you know, beautiful energy of pleasure. So we feel energized, he feels dead, basically. <laughs> yeah. She wants more, he uh, is tired. <laughs> that's it, and let's be honest, she wants more. This is just teasing, mm -hmm. okay? Like, we, we women, we can admit here that, you know, we are unsatiable. Mm -hmm. We are like, go, go, go more, 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 right? Because it's our, uh, our, our orgasmic energy is endless. Yeah. The supply of it is endless. So now ask yourself if this is the path that we should pursue, if it is not possible to be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what happens with women is that 
we don't experience the side the, the negative side effect of orgasm immediately okay we feel fantastic however when the energy subsides a lot of times it is four days later mm. okay we feel bitchy moody frustrated irritable and it could show up with kids it could show up at work it could show up it could resurface that energy of of like um you know instability it's just emotional instability it can resurface in a relationship and causing some kind of a misunderstanding drama guilt blame shame and so on yeah so we basically become bitches okay and you know when i i noticed that hey you know why does this happen i do not like myself in that version of me that's a shadow okay i am aware of that i can be like that yeah, but what can I do that I'm not that way, that I don't show up that way? So you see many, many tantric teachers, for example, they will say, oh, you know, women should have many, many orgasms and so on. And in the same time, she will be moody. She will be testing her man and he needs to stand strong and avoid his own orgasm. And I'm like, his own ejaculation, right? And I'm like, how does this make sense? Like, why, why would the creator set up create this beautiful sacred union between between man and a woman and set it, set him up on a path where he cannot experience that the same release but she's entitled to yeah yalla and then in exchange for his self discipline he is supposed to have a bitch at home Mm. I mean, it's like, seriously, look how many men today return home and they do not have any respect at home because the woman is going haywire. Mm. Yes. And uh, I mean, what is the benefit of this? That I would be moody for, for in front of my partner. That is destabilizing, especially if I have children with him, especially if we would like to create prosperity uh, let's say you know both of us are are into entrepreneurship and so on yeah or we are creating the kingdom of god on earth new earth of course we want to be both graceful peaceful so here's what i discovered that you know in that state when i would have a lot of orgasmic sex and believe me i have the best sex ever in my life in that sense okay been that done that so don't tell me that i am some kind of you know i have inhibitions and i don't know life and i haven't experienced pleasure oh yeah i have like i've done a lot of research in terms of sexuality how experimenting on myself mm -hmm. like really knowing without it was almost like a scientific journey mm -hmm. everything i wanted to experience everything i wanted to know i dived in like a scientist also yeah so um, what I noticed when I, was, uh, when I was on the path of knowing myself in that sense, I noticed that, first of all, it opens this uh, multiple orgasm, orgasms, they, uh, the addiction opens a floodgate, floodgate of demonic energy in a woman. Mm. Okay. Number one thing, fear. Yes. It almost feels like, you know, when, 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 your, brain, when your brain has been banged out, okay, by a by a lover who does the same thing like they show us in porn what happens is that you feel empty as a woman you might feel like like you were like a beautiful tree with lots of apples and someone just robbed you know stole all the apples mm -hmm. and you feel like you have nothing to offer like you're not good enough especially because this man distances himself after sex so like, ah, so he doesn't give me attention anymore. Okay, I don't feel loved. Well, why? Because I'm not beautiful, because I, I am not lovable. Do you see all this, the, the fear that creeps in? Yeah? In this moment, what do women do? Women shop, mm. right? Look at Amazon. Do you think that Amazon would, would thrive if women would stop shopping like crazy? Mm. Yes? We shop for lingerie, we shop for shoes, for uh, for bags, uh, lipsticks, and so on. Thinking, oh, you know what? I will get men's attention when I when I dome myself up in in that thing. Then I will drain, I'll siphon his attention for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there there is a certain, I would say, just vampirical energy that wakes up. That is because if I don't feel good enough and beautiful as I am, 
then ha, you know, well, maybe I need his credit card so I can buy myself the shit I don't need really, but just to seduce him, mm -hmm. okay? So fear, uh, greed, greed wakes up, shop, spend money, money, money. Just observe this, yeah? In the same time, you lose money as a woman. I notice that when I channel my sexual energy, I always have more money than I need. Why? Because my desires are very small. My desires are small. I am rational. Like before I click, before I want to buy something, before I decide, I will go like, do I really need it? No. So there is this beautiful place of like just being satisfied with little. Enjoying nature more than all this, you know. Shopping malls. It's just some racks from mm. China, mm. you know, like from sweat labor shops. We women should boycott that. Yeah. So what happens next thing, what wakes up in a woman when that, when the floodgates open? Jealousy. Mm. Yeah, because fear creeps in and then, wow, you know, maybe he's got, maybe he, he likes another woman. Yeah. Because, you know, maybe his attention is driving somewhere else. So there is competition between women. If the women are not sisters anymore. Mm. Why? Because of that, of, the, of being reckless with sexual energy. Simple. If you look at the roots, the root cause of like, how can we actually pull it out, weed out the garden, that will be there. Yeah. Then, so jealousy, just told paranoia. Oh my gosh, you know, he talks to a woman. To, to another woman, he looks at them, like he see, he turns around and looks at other women on the street and just, we know that, right? So there's a lot of paranoid thoughts that keep appearing. Another thing is that anger, all of a sudden anger appears. Why? Because you see, um, our brain is, a, uh, our brain has three parts. Yeah, if I'm correct, one is a reptile, the limbic brain, that's just fight or flight. It's survival. Mammals that have, have given us the, 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 the other part of the brain, mammalian brain. And the, the frontal is language, the ability of language and being civilized in, the, you know, in culture, right? So we have a big, the, there is a big part of our brain is called mammalian brain, brain of mammals, yeah? And... If we function, if we have sex like mammals do, okay, like cows, sheep, monkeys, horses, and so on, like if we decide to pursue that path, then take a look what happens. Look at animals. There is no bull that's going to fall in love and, and have sex with the same cow over and over and stay in a relationship with her. It's not going to happen. Okay, there is no horse that's gonna do, do something like this either, right? So anger arises, frustration arises in a relationship when we have orgasmed out, when we are satiated, mm. okay? And that can happen after just, I don't know, three days and so on. So woman, it's a woman in that moment, um, has a big conflict because on one hand she doesn't want to get intimate with this man anymore okay she doesn't want to repeat the same thing over and over yeah and the la the neocortex here in the brain that civilized part of her is like no i need to keep the family i need to keep the marriage this is not how things should work you know he needs to do what i need blah blah what i want see that so there is an obligation to stay in a cage of marriage because marriage like that becomes a cage it's a prison okay for both and and then she her body is satiated means she wanted the pizza she got the pizza and that is she's not aware of that so she's acting a little bit like a like a you know like a mare i think a female female horse that wants to kick off the male horse like I don't want I don't want this horse anymore. She's pushing him away. A lot of times in a relationship a woman can put on weight, become obese when she puts when she wants to push the man away. All right? Or ill or something like this. With men that is socially acceptable that they get satiated. That they don't want to eat the pizza anymore. Okay, Evita. So tell us tell us so uh... How to deal with it, like when you have this pressure, you're in the bedroom with your partner and 
how to control this, uh, how do you know you are on yes. a good wave, you are yes. not, uh, you know, gonna explode, how mm -hmm. to control that, how do you, how do you do? <laughs> yeah, so how, how to actually avoid orgasm, right? So in Karetsa, in Karetsa lovemaking, orgasm happens, and when it happens, when it occurs, because we went overboard, okay, then it is, you know, it happens, it's fine, no big deal, but Karetsa couples are kind of aware that the partner who had orgasm might be irritable for two weeks, okay? So they're like extra patient, you know, with each other, or the, the partner might withdraw, yes, and need time to just recuperate, yeah? Um, so how do, how do we avoid orgasm, actually? So think about it this way, that orgasm is like, is, is like a waterfall, yes? So imagine you are rafting on the river, and you are rafting together, let's say you let's say you canoe, for example, you're on a ponton, and you know the the river is very calm at the beginning, very peaceful, but then you see you're heading towards a waterfall. So if you get very close to the waterfall, it's gonna pull you down. Yeah? So the key is to knowing yourself individually and communicating how far you are, how how close are you already to that peak experience, yeah? Because, you know, if you are very close to the waterfall, it's better, if like, like right at the edge, it's better if you actually go through rather than irritating yourself and frust staying frustrated that you got very heated up, yes, that your brain is overheated and, you know, the body, the sexual organs and so on, and you can't freaking have a satisfaction, right? So uh, what Caressa couples do is that instead of getting close to the water, the, to the waterfall, close to the rapids, they canoe, they swim, they, they dwell in the deep waters, in the waters of intimate connection, in the waters of, of bliss rather than lust, okay? So practically speaking, they communicate and imagine 10, imagine a scale, yes? 10 is when you, when you ejaculate, yes? Or when you orgasm as a woman and when you climax. Uh, then 10 is when you when you when you get off then zero is when you start so you have a scale yeah now imagine when you come closer you can communicate that you are at level three level seven level eight yes normally caretza couples if you speak with them they don't even get close to six rarely ever yes I pers personally discovered that it's such a beautiful experience to be at level three as a woman and just dwell there, just be there. It's so sweet. I don't want to be overstimulated and pushed towards the edge. Yeah. So it's a it's like a breath of fresh air for a man that he actually does not have to, you know, perform and and run for the finish. Yeah. Run for for a goal, mm -hmm. a target. Caretza love making does not have a goal. So Caretza couple will connect and warm up the energy a little bit. And then when they, when they wish to finish the connection, okay, they basically um, dissipate. So a, a lot of times it's making love in stillness. That's why it's quantum. You don't see like anything is happening here. It's so discreet, so subtle. And um, they, they will, for example... Um, connect in meditation so so uh, penis is inside and yet they are in stillness in med meditative state the, uh, focused on breathing yes moving the energy through breath bringing awareness to it it's a very very slow sex it's like s l o w so slow <laughs> Yes, like if you think you're slow, you need to be 10 times slower, mm -hmm. okay? And that actually allows to bring awareness and really, really feel. Because when we speed up the energy, we, we bypass the sensations that, that, you know, that we don't feel. We basically miss out the, on the opportunity to actually go, you know, and pick the mushrooms on the go as we walk through the forest. Mm. We just kind of like run through, you know, through the forest, yeah? Exactly. We're forgetting the journey. Yes, exactly. that's right. Yeah, people focus on the goal, but they forget the journey. Yes, so yeah. it's all about the journey. Mm. It's all about nurturing connection, nurturing love, and, and generating reality. And uh, making love that way allows you to actually jump timelines. In a sense, I wouldn't say you don't have orgasm. You have a different quality of orgasm. 
you don't have climax in med medical sense. You avoid climax. Yeah, you you have a different quality of orgasm, which is my friend who is a Karetsa man um, from Portland, Oregon. He actually said it is infinite lovemaking because that sexual energy, instead of densifying here and heating up and accumulating in the in the in the genitals, actually you are present with it to dissipate it into your extremities. So then your whole body becomes sensitive and, and, and worthy of love. It becomes lovable, the whole body, not just your genitals. Mm. And uh, another thing is that later on you dissipate it out of the body into your aura, into your field. And you remember you are actually an energy field. You are actually be an infinite being. You get to experience it through the body and out. Exactly. Um, now let's let let me share with you what happened. What happens when I, as a woman, channel my energy? Okay, and I've been doing this. I've been practicing this path for several years already. First of all, that appears. What appears is emotional balance. A woman who channels her, who cultivates her sexual energy, a karetsa woman, is emotionally balanced. She is rational. She has her mental energy, her mental body, her mental capacities are in peace, at peace. They are sharp. And she is a reliable partner to the man. Yes? So notice this. A man, a man potentially, physically, he could be aggressive. Woman mentally can be aggressive if she is destabilized. So it requires both to, to have self-discipline. Yeah? And... You know, when two people channel their sexual energy, it builds so much trust and so much love and respect. It just brings into the sacred, into the union that we can literally call it sacred union or power couple or twin flames. Yeah, You've, we've heard all this terminology and it's like a dream, almost like an unreachable dream, almost like we, you know, we were, we are being told to lick a popsicle through glass, through window glass, yeah? But actually our dreams are available. They are possible. They only require self-discipline and knowing yourself. So now what happens when both parties, when both men and a woman enter the bedroom? Well, first of all, um, Karetsa, it's also known as Gnostic sex because this was practiced, this, this path, was practiced by Yeshua and Mary Magdalene. Apparently, she initiated Yeshua. She taught Yeshua how to how to do this. And I believe that it's so important for women to be able to teach men how to make love. A man knows how to have sex. A woman needs to teach him how to make love. Yes? So don't complain if a man is not a good lover. Just teach him. Yeah, know thyself and teach him. So um, when both when when these two uh, these two lovers they enter the bedroom in gnos in gnostic community we say the Holy Spirit descends upon them. So there is a presence of the source. Ultimately, when people make love, it's what God looking through the eyes of the man, looking experiencing real experiencing through the senses through the touch right and god the same the same i am presence is here and i am presence is through the body of the woman is also experiencing so it's almost like the source mirroring flashing light through the nervous system of both avatars of both partners and that's why it's such an amazing divine experience in a way, orgasm was repressed and sexual energy was repressed. So we couldn't study that energy because orgasm be betrays one truth, that we are beings of light. When you, you probably know, you notice, right? When you have orgasm, you experience tremendous light in your body. Yeah? So two beings of light enter the bedroom in for the purpose of generating energy cultivating their energy and nourishing their connection yeah so it's not the purpose is oh i'm gonna give you 10 orgasms tonight yes and i'm going to bring some kind of a manual mental manual and stimulate the clitoris so you just get off and get off 
I mean, let's face it. It's like a woman can do this to herself. She doesn't need a, she doesn't need a man. A machine can do this nowadays. That's why men is so redundant, is so redundant in that kind of context. Yeah. And nothing can replace spiritual connection. Yeah, no machine, no technique can replace spiritual connection. Yes, so we walk into the bedroom that way. Knowing also that the body of a man is the polar opposite of the body of the woman. So each of them are like batteries. Yes, now imagine Duracell battery, yes, here and flipped here. So a man is charged uh, he, a, a man has plus around his genitals and minus in the area of his heart and the woman vice versa. She has electric energy, so she is charged. She has plus around her heart and she has minus around her genitals. Yes, yeah, so they are polar opposite. They, this way they complete each other. They flow, they can run a current of energy when they connect properly, yeah? And um, we know that men, when he's aroused, he brings that electric energy and this is what he wants to give. Yes. And there is no reason to shame a guy that, you know, that he, he is horny. Basically, lo the love energy flows through his body that way. So what a blessing. He's not horny. He's healthy. Okay. He is healthy. And, and. Um, the center of power in a man is around his penis. Yes, so ladies, if you want to have, if you want to enter into the heart of the man, you need to go through through that portal. Yes, you need to honor his sexual energy and respect it. Yes, the center of woman's power is around her heart. Yes, so for for men, if you want to make a woman wet and interested. Yes, pay attention to her heart, pay attention to how she feels. Yes, um, pay attention to this in terms of intimacy, pay attention to the area of breasts, heart chakra, lots of kiss, touch, connection there. Yes, because this is, this is exactly where she is electric. She is magnetic in her, in the area of her genitals. So it doesn't make any sense to start intimate experience from stimulating the clitoris. Mm. It's like idiotic. It's a shit we learn from porn. Yes, you need yeah. the lubricant. Yeah, you need, you need all stuff. sorts of fake stuff. If you then. started with yeah. that side, with this part, it's, yes. uh, you don't need any lubrication. Yes, exactly. So it will save you lots of money. Yes, <laughs> you see, you, <laughs> yeah, you, you may not be aware, but when you are in a restaurant, for example, you take a lady f out for, for, for dinner, you're in a restaurant. If you pay attention to what she says, you're attentively listening to her divine intelligence, streaming her wisdom. Yes, her feel, her, her, her heart. She gets wet. And then the woman can confirm this. Mm -hmm. She will be charmed by, just by the listening you provide, just by the fascination you provide. Yes, you don't have to do much. Uh, men actually do way too much in terms of bedroom. Way too much. And a lot of times we women wonder like, oh my gosh, he's got so much energy. He's so impulsive, <laughs> so driven, so motivated. It's like a volcano. <sighs> How do I handle that volcano? How do I calm him down so I can connect with him? So it doesn't burn me. Mm. Yeah. So gentlemen, peaceful confidence, presence. Your presence is, is the gift. Yes. Not so much, not performance. They lie to you big time that you have to perform some stance, some, some, you know, some sports, some, some stuff like this. We no, actually that actually disrupts the connection. Yeah. So, um, the word sex has two meanings. One already, you know, yes. S E X is sacred energy exchange. Yes. Quantum means discreet, invisible. Yes. Another word. Of another meaning of sex is to section, to cut apart, yeah? And that's exactly when you run for the finish, you have lots of orgasms, lots of ejaculation, and then a, a sooner or later, 
you cut the relationship apart. The partners, the, the magnets, you see, the, the polarity, the magnets that were driving them towards each other now flip and they repel each other. And, you know, you can, you can if, if you are not knowing what's happening on the level of neuro, you know, on the level of the, on the level of energy, electricity, magnetism here, if you're not aware of this, you might think, oh, she abandoned me because I'm not good enough, because I don't have money. Or he walked away because I'm not hot enough. Do you see that? We are being programmed to see, to take this personally. Absolutely nothing. He left because he basically ejaculated me. And he got satiated. You see this? So when we are aware of that polarity, okay, we, we uh, in Karetsa, we enter the bedroom interested so that we can experience the dance of hearts. We can experience making love, not lust. So we are aware of thoughts that are lustful and we want to elevate them to thoughts of love. We want to transmute them to connection, love. There is a human being there when you look into the eyes. Yes? On, 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 for this purpose also in Karetsa couples, avoid certain positions that would dehumanize. For example, you know, a position of doggy style is not really hum like very intimate in terms of spirituality, right? It's more like, you know, if a woman is exposed that way to a man, it's not possible for him to last long because the breeding program switches on. The program, you know, copulate and, and run for the finish, fertilize her, make babies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So ladies, you know, if you turn around this way, don't blame your partner that he objectifies you. You just objectified yourself. Or maybe the ladies turn up like this because they don't want to last for long. <laughs> oh, that's true. Because that's... they have enough of this kind of uh, exactly. sexual connection. So let's Spot on. do it. It's like Spot on. Of... And this is another thing that we need to uh, talk about is that, you see, in the culture that made orgasm into a salvation, Women have been, women have been experiencing pressure to have orgasm, like obligation. Mm. Yeah. So if you don't have orgasm, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. You're frigid. You're not good enough. You're not a good lover. All right. In that, in this culture, man has been experiencing pressure to perform, to do some stunts, some tricks, make, make a trick on her, on her body. Show that you know how to trick her body. Yeah, into, into that. That's very mechanical, really. And you know that pressure for him to perform, for her to, ha to have orgasm, you know how women release it? Exactly how Iki said. She said, we basically take it. Mm -hmm. When we are fed up of the, of, the, of the stress, when we feel the pressure of the men to perform, we can't connect mm -hmm. because it's stress. He's in fear that he's going to fail. Mm -hmm. He's not in love. You cannot be in love and fear in the same time. It's like, you know, it's like olive and oil, uh, water and oil. It does not mix. Mm. Yeah. So when we feel that he suffers so much trying so hard, we just go like, okay, you know, maybe I'll just scream a couple times and he'll finish. Yeah. What time is it? Or yeah. 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 We heard lots of studies like that. Yeah. Totally. Very, like, totally. People are disconnected. Disconnected. Yeah. yeah? So, yeah. I mean, I encourage you leave comments under this video if you find this uh, if you find it correct in your experience yeah mm. if if it resonates in any ways if you disagree please leave comments as well let's have a debate here let's have a dialogue mm. let's create a community where we can actually have intelligent almost sci almost uh, intelligent rational fascinating conversation and a study of sexual energy yes there is no reason why the language of sex would belong to a priest, a clergyman, or to some pop star on, you know, in an MTV video. Why? Or some, some educated moron in, in Harvard, okay, wearing some PhDs in front of his name. Why? Why would that be so monopolized? We have our own language. It's poetry. It's... it's I mean, it's, fasc it's fascinating when we actually study a phenomena that was tabooed from us, mm. yeah? So, um, so I talked about the batteries, yes, the magnets, yeah? 
One more thing I want to share with you is the dance of the hearts, right? So now there is a meridian. You probably have seen, if you have ever visited a Chinese doctor or if you've ever seen meridians on, you know, Chinese medicine, you will see all sorts of almost like electrical wires going through the body with certain points. Those are like acupuncture points, um, you know, acupressure points and so on. They're called axioms, yeah? And, um, and the, those lines, those electrical lines around the body are called meridians. So now guess what? There is a meridian of the heart. The meridian of the heart in a woman goes from her heart down into her cervix. Okay, that's where she, the cervix has a lot of neurons. It is, it's almost like her heart is rooted there. Yes, and it blossoms like a tree, like apple tree. Yeah. Now what happens if you make love and you connect consciously with her heart on mental level, emotional level, physical touch, you can literally kiss the heart chakra. If you spend time kissing her chest in her heart chakra, okay, not just nipples and breasts, literally you can put your head, your head here and just lie down for a while. You can, if you had a bad day, you can actually cry here and if the woman is sincere, she's going to feel loved because she will know that she's so loved, that she's trusted by you to be vulnerable, to fall apart and not pretend everything is all right. Mm -hmm. That is true love. How do we make love? What is the main ingredients? Fear. If you want to buy, if you want to bake a pie, you want to bake a cake. Yes, you need ingredients, right? You need baking soda, you need flour, you need eggs, whatever, chocolate, cacao. The main ingredients for making love is fear. We take fear and we turn it, we heal it, we turn it into love. So if a man feels like, oh gosh, you know, I, was, I wanted to make all this money and the project failed and so on. This is an opportunity to make love out of his fear. Yes, and he needs space to return to his woman, trusting that everything is okay, mm -hmm. that she understands him, that she respects him, and then he feels loved, okay? Just like when he brings her beautiful gifts and she says, thank you, he feels loved, yeah? So with, with, with men, if we like this, I said to you, if you, wanna get, if you wanna get into the heart of men, go through his penis, why? Because the meridian of the heart of man is finished. It ends at the tip of his penis. This is why the tip of his penis is so sensitive. Because there's a lot of nerve endings there. His heart is literally rooted down there. Okay, so how would you neglect it? It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it is, man's, man's penis is like a magic wand that can enter the womb and the womb is like a bell, like a, like a, you know, church bell. And once the magic wand enters there, the bell can sound. It can make beautiful sound that repels all the demons because the, the frequency is so high. Yes. So if a woman wants to make love with a man, simple, that she's penis. Put your hand gently on his genitals and you will see, you're going to see a big smile. You're going to see a happy guy. Mm -hmm. And gentlemen, please confirm. You watch this video, leave, the, leave a comment so ladies would know. I'm speaking truth, right? Mm -hmm. That is called honoring his, he, his sexuality. Mm -hmm. And you can have foreplay for as, ma as many hours you want. Of course, gentle, because you don't want to run for the finish. Very slow and gentle, yes? But in the same time, he knows we're gonna get this, we're gonna get there. Yes, she knows how I feel. She respects how I feel. Make sense? So this is how the heart of the man opens. Yeah, he loves that woman who honors his sexual energy. So when, when two people connect in quantum sacred energy exchange, what happens is that the man enters slowly and when he when he brings the tip of when he brings his penis he provides the energy He's, he provides the magic wand and gently he can be present around the cervix somewhere 
circulating or just even in stillness. And you know what happens? Magic happens that they never told us about it. It, uh, the, the, there, is a, there is a beautiful current of love energy that runs through the body of the woman. She feels loved when he, it's all it takes is literally he can connect, he can plug the, the plug into the socket. No performance needed. On the contrary, if, if you perform, if you do this action, okay, some bang, bang, and so on, you disrupt that energy. You disrupt the subtle energy and the walls, vaginal walls actually harden, okay? And she becomes addicted, addicted to it. She becomes desensitized, so she cannot feel anymore. It's, diff it's, more, it's difficult, it becomes difficult to feel pleasure when you're just present there. Yes, and flow that energy. And, you know, it's the, the whole chemistry of the woman changes. She becomes addicted. Why? Because the breeding program of nature, nature switches on. Oh, you're making babies. Good, super. Let's make you both very horny. Okay, so the, uh, there, is a lot of, there is a lot of energy that flows to the lower chakras just for the breeding program of nature. You, when you practice, uh, when you, when you practice, love making when you make love you don't want to accumulate your energy around your genitals you want to dissipate that energy all around so you can feel pleasure in your fingertips you can feel bliss flowing and it's very calm and in that sense you do it experience orgasm it's just it's infinite you you literally connect you can you when when you connect so calmly that he just enters like this and the position is different yeah like positions could be like scissors okay where the body is very relaxed both parties are very relaxed so they are not having pressure here to to do some push-ups okay <laughs> so when when they can actually connect in being relaxed they can have conversation they can they look into each other's eyes he can put his hands on her on on her breasts and then there is a circuit that it closes right so his electric energy flows into her womb the meridian carries it into the heart the heart blossoms woman feels so much love it's like a healing beauty it's literally the energy is like when you experience almost like some amazing magical like like energy healing, yes? And it's basically oxytocin. It's the hormone of love, unconditional love that, that, that takes place. And this energy flows into man's heart. He feels loved. He feels seen as his spirit being that he is. And then it flows down into his penis and it circles. So it's very, I'm talking about engineering, etheric energy ether engineering through your body mm. just to listening to that you make me feel very like, relaxed yes. and like, calming and it's we like, want it yes please <laughs> yes please <laughs> yes please exactly yes. amazing so, ladies um, uh, leave some comments here would you like to would you like to experience this kind of love making so, so men who watch this video are not going to think like, oh, no, I don't think she would like that. I think she wants that boom, boom thing. Mm. You know, it's time for us to, to make the men aware mm. that we are, we are actually interested in making love, not in performance. Yes, Be I have truthful. to share this with you. Like I, I've experienced something recently that uh, maybe is very private, but um, I have a connection with uh, my partner and uh, I just was telling him like, no, I don't want to have organs, just calm down. Yeah. And for him was just uh, because it's new for him. And he was like, uh, yeah, why? That's such a new thing. Like yes. normally in the past when I had connection with women, so that was more like, as we said, this normal one, this uh, old school one, old school yes. sexual connection. So I can believe it that many, many women men they don't know even that this type of yes. uh, sexual connection mm -hmm. exists but i have to tell when you come down the person that your partner it's amazing it's beautiful and he is really after me right now i can feel it like he's so creative and you know it gives both us so much yes. power yes so and you see this mm -hmm. is how you know this is exactly how you know you had good sex you know after mm. okay you know after because you are sowing seeds you're generating energy when you make love. 
and observe how do you feel after. Do you feel more connected or less? Mm. Yeah, You will feel telepathic connection with your partner. You will not even need to text. Okay, you just you just get the remote viewing. Yeah, you feel you feel total trust. There's no jealousy whatsoever in 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 Caretza couples. There is no fear. There's just, just to, there's no drama. Mm. So there is no danger of divorce. And then this is an this is a, a recipe for successful families where we can actually raise children in the canopy of love. Mm -hmm. But also not necessarily just for the raising families, yeah. because these days people yeah. maybe don't want to have of children, mm -hmm. uh, but for the healthy relationships. Totally. For healthy relationships. And I think uh, I, we will talk about this as well, like how uh, this sort of love yes. helps you to generate money. Yes. In another video. In another video, because this is very connected. Very connected. Very connected. Everything money is connected to sexual energy. Also, is energy. Totally. Right. So then, in the next video, we're gonna talk about finances. Mm -hmm. Yes. How you can generate that. So yeah. Vida will give us some advices and tips. Uh, so yes. So that's very amazing. Very good explanation. Thank yes. you for sharing. Today uh, we've been we've been talking about the forbidden, the forbidden fruit. The really the stuff they don't want you to know. This lovemaking has been forbidden by the Vatican twice. Mm. Okay, this is why the Cathars were slaughtered mm. because they would channel their sexual energy, they would create abundance, prosperity, happy families, and they were unmessable with. They basically they won't refuse to pay pay tax to the Pope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second time, this lovemaking was was banned by the Vatican. Was when there was a. There was an eco village. There was a basically community living of land in Oneida, Tennessee, at the beginning of the nineteenth uh, or twentieth century. I think nineteen something, twentieth century. And an, a medical doctor, Alice Stockham, she actually would venture there and observe them. As she served them as a doctor, she would observe how come these people are so healthy. Like women are just glowing, oxytocin ladies, rejuvenation, yeah? And how come there is no conflicts here? Like there's no alcoholism, there is no, you know, women, when women don't have menstruation pains, they don't labor in pain. Like what is going on here? And then she realized how they make love differently. She learned this, she would make love th this way. She actually coined the, the term carezza and you know, Mistakenly, it's being told that the name comes from Italian and it means caress. Mm -mm. I feel the, the name, the, the term carezza comes from car in Albanian, it means penis. Mm -hmm. it's, Albanian is the oldest language of Europe mm -hmm. and it's the root of many, many, many words. Lovely. Uh, so, do, would you like to add something else? Because I want to that's say it. that's it for today. That's, that's all for today. Okay, for this, for this, uh, for this program. Uh, I just want to uh, tell you that uh, Evita, she's running programs about this uh, Caretza, uh, making love, uh, sexual quantum love. If you would like to get in touch and uh, get private one-to-one -one, or maybe as a couple or mm -hmm. maybe a retreat, uh, so please get in touch uh, because it's a very good knowledge. Of course, this is very short information because, of course, it's online, but... Uh, the subject is very big and then when you are more one-to-one -one with her, then mm -hmm. you can go through the whole week. So you practice, you come back with your partner, right? That's right. Because you've done this tour around the United States, mm -hmm. uh, so it needs more time, right? This is mm -hmm. something like, this is just a glimpse of what we're sharing mm -hmm. here with you. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very so much, much for the opportunity to speak about this. Amazing, you know? amazing. I've been dreaming to speak truth about sex. Amazing. And you came all the way to Albania and now we're we are giving it to the world. Yay! Yeah, yeah, okay. Lovely. Thank you so much, guys. Uh, see you again in the next video. Thank you.